My name is Rosella Salute Garcia. I graduated from Smithfield High School, and I'm a first-generation college student. I began my academic journey at CCRI in 2021, and I expect to graduate this year during the fall semester with a degree in general studies. Then I will transfer to Rhode Island College through the, through the JAA program to pursue my bachelor's in psychology and a minor in neuroscience. My goal for the... My goal for the future is to become a psychotherapist focusing on, focusing on neurodiversity, religious relations, and holistic modalities. And, and my ultimate dream is to pursue higher education in the research field. I found passion here at CCRI. I found amazing professors, friendly advisors, and a community of people who believe in me and encourage me to follow my dream. And as a student ambassador, I love being able to share my experience with with upcoming or incoming CCRI students. I'm so grateful for all the opportunities I've been given at CCRI, and I'm honored to participate today in the opening day uh, convocation and introduce our first speaker. David Caprio is an attorney with the Caprio Law Firm in Providence and former Rhode Island State Representative for 10 years, where he served, where he served on multiple committees, including the House Finance Committee and the Subcommittee on Education. In 2022, Governor McKee appointed Mr. Caprio as Chair of the Council on Post-Secondary Education. It is my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Dave, David Caprio to, and to give welcoming remarks. Thank you all, thank you. First, I want to thank all of you for all of your dedicated service and changing the lives of all of your students, like Rosella, who will uh, move on to further her education at Rhode Island College. And if it wasn't for all of the work that you do, Ros Rosella would not have uh, the, ab the ability or the opportunity to move on with their education. So thank all of you. Hold on, hold on. And there were two things that kind of make you feel advanced in age that just happened uh, in my life. One is, Rosella called me Mr. Caprio, which I'm not really used to. And secondly, when we, would, uh, when we met today and we were sitting here reviewing our remarks, Rosella was looking at this little magic piece of glass that she keeps in her pocket making changes. And I had one of these and one of these. And I was using this thing and I was explaining to Rosella that this has this little magic fluid in it that you use and you're right. And she looked at me with a straight face and said, how do you charge it? <laughs> right, is that true? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rosella. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for Rosella. <laughs> you know, very impressive and, and, and truly a, a great ambassador for the community college. Yeah, as a first gen uh, college student, um, you have a lot in common with many of your classmates, and it's really the life-changing work that everybody does here uh, to change the lives of not only yourself, but families around Rhode Island. You know, when I hear that, it brings to mind someone dear to my heart, and that's my father, who many of you know, Judge Caprio. Um, he was a first-generation college student when he went to college many years ago. Um, and, you know, with 22 aunts and uncles and 50 cousins, he was the first person in the entire family to finish college. And you see the change that it's made in, in his life and fortunately for myself, my life. And again, thanks to the work that uh, all of you do here, you continue to do that for our fellow Rhode Islanders. Um, to the faculty, staff, and my fellow council members, welcome to the CCRI's opening day convocation. And this morning, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Dr. Rosemary Costigan as the our incoming interim president of the Community College of Rhode Island. She's been here so long, there's not really much I have to inform you about, Rosemary. 
She's a respected colleague, a lifelong educator who brings a wealth of experience and dedication to the college. You know, when, when the uh, post-secondary council looked to appoint uh, uh, an interim president, um, there really was only, only one choice that we considered seriously, and that was Romer Rosemary. Her entire, entire adult life has prepared her to be a leader in higher education and uniquely right here at CCRI. She understands what the new students are feeling this year, what they're gonna be feeling when they show up uh, next week, as she also attended and is a graduate of the Community College of Rhode Island, or as it was known when she was there as Rhode Island Junior College. Is anybody here, is any, has anybody here uh, have a history back to when it was Rhode Island Junior College? We have a few, okay. So Rosemary, you're not alone. You have some of your fellow Rhode Island Junior Collar, Collegeites here. Then she went on to the University of Rhode Island, uh, Rhode Island College and then to the University of Rhode Island. There is no one more versed in public higher education in this state uh, than Rosemary. Her career in higher education displays an unwavering commitment to academic excellence and student success and a steadfast focus on the needs of students, faculty, and staff. You've already seen her leadership style and it is hands-on. From the president's office, she will utilize her decades of knowledge, experience, and her existing relationships with all of you and everybody around the state to further the path of excellence for CCRI that she and Megan Hughes have diligently pursued together. As we stand on a cusp of a new era at CCRI, we can all say and believe with absolute confidence that the college is in very capable hands, the future is bright, and Rosemary's vision for CCRI will lead us all to greatness. On behalf of my fellow members of the Council on Post-Secondary Education, please join me in extending a warm welcome to our president, Dr. Rosemary Cassidy. Good morning, everyone. Chairman Capriel, thank you so much for those kind words, and thank you, Rosella, for introducing the chairman. Wow, this seems surreal. CCRI, we have arrived. We have Today, for the first time in the college's history, a graduate will lead this institution. I'm going to follow Chairman Caprio's ask, and I'm going to ask all the faculty and staff that are either graduates of the former Rhode Island Junior College, like myself, who I am wearing my 45-year nursing pin from this school, uh, if you, are an, if you are a staff or a faculty member and you have graduated from this institution, please stand. Wow. Thank you. You all share in this achievement today. I would also like to thank members of the Post-Secondary Council state officials, and the entire CCI community for the trust that you've placed in me to lead the college during this time. There are a few people in the audience that I would like to recognize. Uh, Kim Barker, who is chairman of our board of trustees. I want to thank Kim. Oh, there she is. I want to thank Kim for her leadership of the foundation. I'm looking forward to working with you, Kim, and on the work of uh, the college. What the foundation has supported is incredible to all of us. I want to thank our labor leaders who I've met with uh, for their uh, support and the, the good conversations and the commitment for us to be working together. I want to thank my academic affairs team 
who have supported me, I'm going to say years, months, weeks, days, and minutes. I would not have made it without you. I know you're there. If you raise your hand, I can see you. Um, but thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I would also like, for those who haven't met our new interim vice president for academic affairs, introduce Dr. Allison Hanley. And Allison, if you could stand, so people hear you. And finally, one more introduction. I am very fortunate to have with me today my husband, Paul, two of my, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, no, two. <laughs> I have so many kids, I forget how many. Uh, uh, two of my children, my sons, Michael and Dennis. Um, I also have with me three of my seven grandchildren, um, Aylin, Kenley, and Michael. My other children are either working or attending opening day activities for pre-K-4. Um, so that's very important, but I know they're with me in my heart. And I'm going to add something that I hadn't prepared myself to do, um, but I drive up this driveway every day that I've been employed at the college and just think how wonderful the opportunity has been for me to come full circle. And this morning's drive up, it was a little stressful, a 40 minute back up on 95, nothing new. And um, as I was driving up, I remembered, I think the date was June 5th, uh, 1978, and I was in the back seat of my parents' Buick and they were driving me to commencement. So it's been a long road. I know that they are uh, here in my heart and I hope they're very proud of the accomplishment. So thank you. I would also like to thank the faculty and staff, and again, the labor uh, leaders who have met with me over the past several weeks. Your expressions of support and hopefulness have been inspiring to me. Without exception, I heard from each person that I met with a strong desire for unity within our community. Today, I will speak to you how we do this, and I will ask for your help. Finally, I would like to take a moment to recognize and thank outgoing President Megan Hughes for her visionary leadership over the past nearly eight years. Under President Hughes's leadership, CCRI reached milestones only hoped for a decade ago. President Hughes has become a valued friend and a, a teacher for me in leadership, and I've learned so much from her. I know you join me in wishing Megan much success and happiness as she begins this new chapter of her professional life. Welcome back, faculty. We're glad to have you back. And among you are 14 new faculty members. If you are a new faculty member joining us for the first time, uh, please stand so we can uh, see you and applaud you. We are so very happy that you're here with us, and we look forward to the contributions that you will give to the CCRI learning community. I want to also thank the student affairs staff who enroll and advise our students year-round. Our enrollment recovery is moving in the right direction. And I think between academic affairs and student affairs in every department within this college, we will meet and exceed our enrollment target for the fall. This is quite an accomplishment coming out of the pandemic that we experienced nearly four years ago. You all are awesome. Thank you. So now to the main event. The end of August, early September is one of my favorite times of year. The cooling temperatures, and I can say it this year because some of these days have not been so cool, the leaves turning, but mostly the potential of the coming academic year is what I love the most. Returning to school has always been emblematic of new beginnings and endless possibilities for me. Though hard to believe, this will be my 47th year as part of this community. Can you believe it? 
<laughs> 47, I don't know how that happened, but I started here in 1976 as a nursing student and have since worn many hats, from student to professor, department chair, vice president for academic affairs, and now serving as your interim president. So I know a little bit about what it's like to walk in your shoes. I've sat through many a convocation, excited, and yes, sometimes even nervous, first timers, for the upcoming year. But this year, this convocation is the most significant of my life. I believe that we are at an inflection point. We have made tremendous strides and have come a long way over the past several years. And we are on par with our national peers for many metrics of success. But we have to decide, we have decisions to make. Do we take this college to the next level or are we gonna be satisfied with the status quo? We need to decide as a community here and now if we're coming together as a force of unity in service to our students who go down the path of excellence. And by that, I mean enabling our incredible student body of 16,000 Rhode Islanders to become the best version of themselves. Or do we become mired in bureaucracy and indecisiveness? I believe you know the answer, and I ask you to join me in supporting an environment that is built upon respect, collegiality, collaboration, and innovation. This will only increase the success of our wonderful students. I believe there are three key ways that we can build this success agenda together. First, you've probably heard me say this before. If asked, please say yes. So what do I mean by that? I mean keep up to date with communications from the college. Become actively involved in what's happening within your college. This year, we will undergo a 10-year accreditation visit from the New England Commission for Higher Education. Please read the self-study. It's posted. There's a survey attached. Please fill it out. Please attend one of our mock interviews, the first one that's scheduled for October 27th. These are all ways that you can become involved and informed in the college setting. Please say yes when we ask for your input and participation, whether it's through governance committee membership, attending your department or divisional meetings, or even having lunch with me. I certainly hope to have some roundtable lunches throughout this academic year with faculty and staff to hear from you on how we can make CCRI a better learning environment. I also ask every department or in division to invite me to one of your meetings so I can get to know each of you, understand your concerns, your ideas, and your solutions on how we become even stronger. We all know it's very easy to be critical. It's not so easy to dig in, get your hands dirty, and figure out solutions, and we need to do that. We need to do it for ourselves, we need to do it for our students, and we need to do it for CCRI, which is the College of Rhode Island. I am looking forward to working with you and finding common ground. The second area that I think that we can build this agenda upon is getting comfortable being uncomfortable. As I said earlier, I believe we are at an inflection point. And we all know that whatever we decide, not everyone is going to agree. Not everything will be perfect. But we must move forward. And we must be willing to implement ideas and strategies that will support the success of our students. If we wait for everything to be perfect, we will never move forward. We will be stuck. And for our students, being stuck is not an option. Time is the enemy. Every additional semester a student is here affects their lives and the lives of their families. They are losing earning power potential with every extra credit they take. 
We know that we've been able to significantly improve our graduation rates. Our two-year graduation rate doubled from 6% to 18%, and our three-year graduation rate tripled, uh, I'm sorry, tripled, I'm not doing good with the math department right now, uh, doubled from 6%, uh, tripled to 18%, and our three-year graduation rate doubled from 15% to 30%. We know the more efficiently we can help our students learn and move through our programs, the sooner they will be able to graduate, get a job, and change the future of their lives and the lives of their families. We need to be nimble in responding to workforce needs in the state of Rhode Island. Failure to do that will threaten opposition. This means building partnerships with employers building partnerships between non-credit and credit through the creation of stackable credentials that allow our students to progress in their jobs while working towards a degree. We should be proud that our employers in Rhode Island turn to CCRI for their workforce training needs. We are at the forefront of producing healthcare providers. Where's our healthcare team? Nurses, dental, Allied Health. You may or may not know that we produce more than a thousand health care providers a year to the state of Rhode Island. We are expanding into the area of sustain sustainable energy resources, and we will soon be training technicians who will be working on wind turbines. And we have been assisting the defense industry for some time training workers who go on to work on submarine building. How great is this? We should all be very, very proud, and it's only the beginning of what we do. Thank you. The third thing, I ask you to continue to be a relentless advocate on behalf of our students. Let me share a little bit about our student speaker today, Rosella. Rosella is a first-generation student who attended public schools and is interested in becoming a neuroscientist. Rosella and I had a wonderful chat recently and shared our experiences of being a first-generation student and the challenges that we sometimes felt and continue to feel. She shared with me how COVID had impacted her transition to college and how she wasn't sure what she was going to do. But she decided to adopt a growth mindset, a can-do attitude, and she came to CCRI. She shared, I think that many of us share, school wasn't always easy, but she met two amazing faculty that changed her life. It changed it so significantly that Rosella is going to pursue the field of neuroscience. These two science professors were excellent teachers that Rosella connected with. They became role models for her. And as she has said, she will be transferring to Rhode Island College to pursue a bachelor's degree. This amazing woman is going to accomplish great things. And who knows, maybe one day she'll be a college president too. We all have the power and the incredible opportunity and privilege to change lives. Thank you, Chairman Caprio, for highlighting that in your remarks. I know this may sound over the top and even like magical thinking, except I know what it's like to be at the end of that focus and a recipient of that mentorship. I was once that student. 47 years ago, when I walked through these doors, I was just out of high school, young, nervous, and yes, scared. And I look at my Aylin as she's about to begin middle school, and she's probably feeling the same way. And Rosella and I shared those feelings. I had many days when I didn't think I would make it through, and I didn't know if I was on the right track. I questioned whether I had the right stuff. I was also the first member, as I said, in my family to go to college. So I didn't know how to make my way through a higher education system and thought at times another route would be easier. 
But I had three professors who held me up and supported me every time I questioned myself and my path. I still know their names. I still recall their faces. And every day, I am grateful for their mentorship and their support because it changed my life and the life of my family. We all have the opportunity to be that person, to have that impact, and to fight hard every day on behalf of all of our students. Each one of us has the power to change a life, and I'm asking you here today to seize that power. In closing, I ask that you share the responsibility of remaining informed and involved. Become comfortable with being uncomfortable and continue to fiercely advocate and support our students. And I might add, Rosella asked me a very poignant question during our conversation, which I wasn't expecting. She asked me whether I reached out to those faculty members who impacted me, or did they reach out to me? And I said to her, you know, for the first time in 47 years, uh, they reached out to me. They recognized potential in me when I was ready to leave. I didn't really know how to reach out. And Rosella agreed the same thing happened with her. It was through their teaching and their engagement with us that really had an impact on our life and our outcomes. So these teachers change lives. You all change lives every day. I'm just asking you to continue to do that. I'm going to close with a quote reminded to me by Dean Stargard, and the quote is by former President Obama. Quote, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we have been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. I want to thank you. I want to wish you an amazing year, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Thank you so much.